Good evening, everyone. Has this not been a special evening? I want to thank you all for being part of the 2016 Catalyst Award Dinner. Let me start by extending personal welcome to Prime Minister Trudeau and Sophie Gregoire Trudeau and extending congratulations to Art Peck and tonight's Catalyst Award winning initiative from Gap Inc. Women and Opportunity. <laughs> Prime Minister, we are honored that you and Sophie have taken time from your children's spring break to be with us tonight and proud that you have chosen Catalyst Stage for your first visit to New York as Prime Minister. I'd also like to extend my personal thanks to our dinner chair, John Viemeyer, Global Chairman, KPMG International, and of course, a member of the Catalyst Board of Directors. John, from the first moment that we met, I've been struck by your commitment to leading by example, to learning from others, and most importantly, by your integrity and authenticity. It's a great honor to share the stage with you tonight. I'd like to thank Peter Vozer and the entire Catalyst Board of Directors for your support, guidance, and leadership, and all you do to bring our mission forward. Special thanks to Target and UPS for sponsoring tonight's dinner and to Brian and David Abney, Brian Cornell and David Abney, for making workplace equality a priority. Your generous support is a big reason for our success tonight. So thank you very much. Thanks also to our entertainment sponsor, Toyota, and to the amazing Judith Hill, who we heard at the top of the program. Thank you, Judith, for being here in celebration with us this evening. Of course, putting on an event this size, year after year, is hard work. Yet somehow, Catalyst's enthusiastic, creative, and energetic staff seems to raise the bar. So thank you, Catalyst, for making this a meaningful and inspiring night that will push us that much closer to the gender equality we seek in the world. And finally, thanks to everyone on the dais and in the room tonight. Catalyst is a mission-based nonprofit organization and this is our biggest annual fundraiser, raising almost a quarter of our operating revenues. And while the money is important, the true success of this event is not measured by the funds we raise, but by the actions we inspire when you return to your workplaces tomorrow. Your presence, your choice, to be here tonight is something to celebrate. Your presence tells the world that despite voices and images that would have us believe that intolerance and division are on the rise, there are equally powerful voices in government and business, in our workplaces, in our families, and in our communities who stand firmly on the side of acceptance and equality. And that is why tonight's recognition of Art Peck and Prime Minister Trudeau is so important. They are two leaders who come to this stage from very different backgrounds and industries. One, rooted in the story of a great company founded on the principle of gender equality. The other, grounded by the values of a great nation and the diversity of its people. Both sharing a commitment to give new meaning to the work and legacies of those who came before them. 
both seeing diverse talent as a driver of innovation and a source of global competitive advantage, both intentionally seeking to build senior leadership teams that are defining the new normal, 50% women, 50% men. But more than that, diverse men and women, people of color, of different religious and ethnic backgrounds, sexual orientation, perspective and experience, women and men given an opportunity to lead, not in spite of their differences, but because of them. Prime Minister, you are a game changer. Not so long ago, I was a candidate for elected office in Canada. I was out canvassing for votes one day, and a mother and daughter came to the door. When the mother explained why I was there, the little girl looked up at me and said, I thought only boys did that. Never again, and not today. You have made what was once unimaginable possible. And importantly, your decision to build a cabinet that looks like the country it is intended to serve, the people's cabinet, will now challenge both political and business leaders everywhere to explain why their leadership teams do not include an equal number of men and women. Now, Art, after years of personally supporting Gap Inc.'s financial goals, <laughs> I counted six pairs of Gap 1969 jeans in my closet. It's been so meaningful for me to learn more about Gap's story. Your Women in Opportunity initiative has raised the bar by intentionally creating a culture of equality and inclusion and truly changing not only the workforce, but the lives of your employees and the communities they live in. You have demonstrated that pay equity and pay transparency are possible. Under your leadership, Gap Inc. became the first Fortune 500 company to publicly disclose and validate that it pays women and men equally for equal work. I applaud you and Gap Inc. for building a senior leadership team that reflects the market it serves, for valuing results, not face time, for developing leaders of all backgrounds, and for committing to lift families and ultimately communities out of poverty by training and empowering more than one million garment workers around the world by 2020. Art, Gapping's brands long ago went over our closets. And now I'm delighted to say that you have won over our hearts by becoming the epitome of the type of workplace Catalyst seeks everywhere. So thank you. Art Peck and Prime Minister Trudeau for the amazing work you are both doing, prioritizing inclusion, celebrating differences. Doing this just doesn't affect your business, your profits, your success. It also sets an example for the world to follow. As you've heard, the theme of this year's Catalyst Award conference is it takes each of us. We chose this theme for two reasons. First, we wanted to highlight the four behaviors that our research has shown to be key to inclusive leadership. You heard them described so eloquently by Prime Minister Trudeau. They are empowerment, accountability, courage, and humility. We've nicknamed them each. And second, we wanted to emphasize that you don't have to be a world leader 
or a CEO to make a difference. A story that's very close to my heart makes this point. Last year, inspired by the Nobel Prize laureate Malala Yousafzai, my niece Haley went to school and declared a personal day of silence. And anyone at home who has a 13-year-old daughter knows this was no small sacrifice. <laughs> On that day, when Haley was approached by a student or teacher, she gave them a small piece of paper that explained that she had chosen to be silent as an expression of solidarity with girls around the world who had been denied the right to an education. By choosing to make the injustices facing girls in another part of the world her problem, Haley's silence echoed loudly across her school and community. Like Prime Minister Trudeau and Mr. Peck, Haley chose to champion the cause of someone whose life experience is completely different from her own. And from where I stand, that too is something to celebrate. Because the images we see, the stories we read, the voices we hear remind us that diversity is a fact, but inclusion is a choice. A choice to see value in differences. A choice we make dozens of times each day in grand gestures that have the power to transform the culture of a company or the global image of a country. And it's in the small gestures, who we speak to in the hallway, who we call on in meetings, what we notice and who we notice. Gestures that tell colleagues that they belong, that their unique experiences, skills, and perspectives are not only welcomed, but valued. This is our shared agenda, and why we at Catalyst have chosen to align our mission statement, accelerating progress for women through workplace inclusion, with what we see happening in the world today. We are evolving our work as the world evolves around us, making sure that we continue to lead a global conversation about the workplace and equality. It's a movement that has the power to make the world around us better by making our workplaces more inclusive. Since we met here last year, Catalyst has reached more than 135,000 people through Catalyst X, our series of massive open online courses hosted on edX. More than half of them are men. They come from over 200 countries, including Syria and Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, places where the opportunity to engage in a conversation about tolerance, acceptance, and differences, and inclusion are rare but needed. We're making progress in opening up the conversation to men through MARC, short for Men Advocating Real Change. It's the first online community where men are empowered to play their part as allies in achieving gender equality in the workplace. Over 44,000 users have accessed our MARC resources, and I'm proud that the community has grown by nearly 40% in the last year alone. And our Women on Board program that you've heard about this evening has been so successful where it was launched in Canada. 54% of the alumni have been appointed to corporate boards. We're delighted with that stat and, of course, will soon be launching this program here in the United States with eminent CEOs such as our dinner chair, John Viemeyer, playing the role of sponsor, which we saw him do so well tonight. <laughs> At the core of this movement 
is a bias toward action, not words, to changing hearts and minds and behaviors, to holding ourselves and each other accountable for building the workplaces and the kind of world that we can be proud of. So join us. Be part of the Catalyst movement. Help us reach 5 million people by 2020 on Catalyst X and 100,000 men on Mark. And if you're a CEO, help us reach our goal of 30% women on boards through our Women on Board program. Make a personal pledge and commitment that you will take back to your office tomorrow to do something differently. But as you do that, remember that moving forward means that we must also be prepared to face difficult truths, including the fact that we don't have to look very far to recognize that women, people of color, the LGBTQ community, indigenous people, and other underserved populations are not being held back simply because of our unconscious biases. Many of our problems, the issues we face at work and in the world, are the result of discrimination, fear, and exclusion. So let's change the script and make conscious inclusion our collective agenda. Let's be conscious of how we're empowering different people. Let's be conscious of who we're holding accountable for what. Let's be conscious of when we find the courage to say something and when we don't. And let's be conscious of pausing humbly to listen to another point of view with an open heart and open mind. Intentionally enacting the each behaviors can do so much to cultivate the type of world we want to live in. A world where women and men are equally powered to succeed. A world where we're all accountable for the well-being of each other. A world where we have the courage to stand up for those who need our help. A world where humility leads to win-win solutions. Together, we can change workplaces and change lives. Haley inspired her class of 25. Art Peck transformed Gap Inc.'s workforce of 140,000. Prime Minister Trudeau galvanized a country of 36 million. In this room tonight, I see 1,600 ambassadors for conscious inclusion with the power to reach millions more. So join us in building more inclusive workplaces. Join us in accelerating progress for women. Join us in a movement that has the power to transform the world. Join us because it does take each of us. Thank you very much for being here tonight.